welcome back to ELT Under the Covers, where we, as English language teaching professionals, we look at the good and the bad of teaching clips on the internet. Uh, we're going to be looking at some tube teachers, so YouTube English teachers today, and we're going to be looking at the good and bad of them shortly. But first, introductions. I am Neil of Team Teacher Fame, and I am joined by... Professor Rich of Professor Rich Fame. Yes, whereas we have a lot of fame within this video and we have more fame coming up because we're talking about a channel called English Class 101 wow so dot, dot com 101 uh, that means that it's basically the fundamentals so this should be yeah. giving clear and so concise English instruction right well, it should be good right I mean uh, they've got they've got almost 6 million subscribers and uh, one of the things that these guys are known for, I mean, it's, it's always this lady, I don't even know her name, but we'll find out when we watch the video. Um, one of the things these guys are famous for is that they are they constantly live streaming at the moment, but it's not really a live stream, it's just a recorded video. Oh, really? And um, what you can actually find, if you take a look at their videos and have a look at videos by popularity, you do get this really bizarre uh, situation where you don't have to scroll down too long until you get to one of their videos which is Learn English Live 24-7, uh, which has uh, 1 million views. And the video length is 1,854 hours, 17 minutes and 7 seconds. Oh, wow. That's the longest YouTube video I've ever seen. I don't even know how they uploaded that. That's going to be like terabytes of video. <laughs> Well, you can definitely, you, I mean, you can't blame them for not having enough content because if, you, if you've got enough content, unless it's just copy-pasted, unless it's like an hour of content copy-pasted 2,000 times, if they've actually got enough unique content to fill 1,850 hours of video, like, oof, okay. There are some intermediate level phrases that you can use in everyday life. You can use them when you travel, at work, uh, in your studies. So I hope that they're helpful for you. Uh, they're for asking and answering questions. So after you learn these phrases, check out the link so in the description. very similar to English, English with Lucy. And practice your English even more. All right, let's get started. I mean, I can see a few differences already, but um, so I mean, she's presenting herself, I think, a bit more professional. I think I think English with Lucy has a bit more of the hello, I'm posh and I'm friendly. Uh, whereas I think she's also got friendly, but I think she, yeah, I don't know. She's she a little of, bit going to be a bit more focused on this is a maybe, maybe serious maybe business <clears throat> or something. Yeah, she's got the website address in there in the top right. And one of the things to note, the difference between these two is uh, English with Lucy doesn't actually have a product which is why she d probably does advertising with other companies. But this lady has a massive product. You can like buy into their huge online English learning stuff. Oh, um, so this kind of does like a bullet, Kaplan, you know, uh, like courses that. and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> how is it going? How is it going? You'll notice with how is it going, that there's an apostrophe at the end of this. It's not how's it going or how is it going. If you say, how is it going? It sounds too stiff. It doesn't sound so friendly. So we say, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going means how are you? Like, how are you doing? Or how is your life going? So she, ironically, uh, she's making a good point, but then she's sort of missing the extrapolation of it. She's, she's making a good point that yeah, how's it going does sound better than how's it going. Um, but then she's gone, she goes on and do, does a load of synthetic examples. How is your life going? <laughs> Why did you do that? Like, yeah, how's it going? It's good. It's good. It's a good observation. And then suddenly she goes on and like, and, and straight back to synthetic language. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, did you have a comment about no, that? No, 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 no. Yeah. It's like a friendly, kind of rougher, more casual way to say, how are you? How's it going? How's and, she's it going? and she just said, how are you? And maybe Americans do sometimes say, how are you? Do they? I don't know. Does your wife ever say that? Does she ever say, how are you? No, she barely acknowledges me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd say, you know, how are you? But the, uh, no, what would I say? No, you say, you? I, I do. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I, never, I never say, how are you anyway? No, you how say, are you? Hey, how are you? Hey, 
<laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be. Yeah. All right, La. Hey, 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 La. Hey, La, did you see the game? <laughs> I don't know why I think all Scouse is obsessed with football. It's not really that true. But, oh. Anyway, let's carry on. How's it going with you? Fine. That was that was a good example there. Look, yeah. Hang on. She, she, she's got like a mix here. For you. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going with you? That was good. Yeah. I'm actually surprised. I was expecting... I was expecting to really get the knives out for this one, but... How's it going with you? She just gave a good example and she even looks off. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like she's gone into like, she's taken herself out of like actor presenter mode mm -hmm. and gone into natural mode and said, how's it going with you? Yeah. You know? Fine. <laughs> See, that's the correct response. How's it going? Fine. How's it going? Good. How's it going? Not bad. Oh, How's right. it it's going? Yeah. How's it going? Okay, let's go on to the next expression. What have you been up to? What have you been up to? I just don't understand why... Oh, what have I done there? I just don't understand why she doesn't apply that stuff that she clearly understands to everything. Like, why then, when she's put the words up, why say, what have you been up to? When she's just demonstrated that she's perfectly capable of saying the sentence in a natural way. Yeah. It's frustrating, actually. It's frustrating. I don't, I don't understand that. What, why, why would she do... Is it because she's introducing this first part and, you know, it's I just don't like know. I wonder, I wonder if she just hasn't put two and two together. Like, she's, she knows that she's saying it's naturally at one point, but she's never, she's, she, she hasn't, I mean, it's the kind of thing that would come up in feedback in a class. So I just wonder how much actual teaching in a class with observation this lady's done. Because now she's obviously, I mean, I don't know if she's just a presenter at this company. I, I get the feeling that she it's her thing. And maybe she's um, like, because this whole learn language 101 stuff, it's like a big network. So maybe she's the English element of that. And maybe it's part of a franchise. I, I, I don't know, I'm just speculating. But I get the feeling that she is a decision maker and she can make decisions about that. And that probably puts her in a difficult position where no one's actually going to give her that kind of feedback. You know, I mean, who's going to go to the boss and say, why are you using those synthetic drills? I've been teaching for 15 years and blah, blah, blah. I mean, she probably wouldn't want to hire that kind of person, right? Mm -hmm. She she doesn't want someone telling her how to teach people. She's the, she's the top thingy. Mm -hmm. What have you been up to? What have you been up to? What have you been up to is a more advanced version of like, what are you doing? So what have you been up to means what did you do since the last time I saw you? What have you been up to? So what have you been up to? It's like, ah, I've been blah, blah, blah. We're going to talk about this in the next expression. So what have you been up to? Or what have you been doing? Is an what have you been doing? What have you been doing? Yeah, she, I don't. Th as far as I'm concerned, she hasn't actually provided a, an authentic example of this sentence yet. Another popular variation. What have you been up to? How have? What have you been up to? See, even then, the intonation wasn't right, was it? What have you been? If I say that to you, Neil, what have you been up to? <laughs> maybe does that sound maybe, like natural maybe, intonation to you? Uh, it what could be. You it could to? be an American thing. No, I don't agree. I don't think that's the way they'd say it. I think they'd be like, "Hey, man, what have you been up to?" Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think she give a single, a single natural example of that. Have you been? How have you been? Oh God. I hate it when people stress the auxiliary, and it's just so. How have you been? How have you been, Neil? <laughs> how have you been? More naturally. <laughs> What? More no, she even said more that, naturally. Yeah. <laughs> she said, how have you been? More naturally. And even then, I would say that she over she overegged the intonation. I do that sometimes in my videos as well. It's something we need to beat out of ourselves. It's not good. You're training, um, you're training them the wrong things. But, wow. Amazing. She knows. She's just not doing it. How have you been? Sounds like, how have you been? in everyday speech. So how have gets reduced to how was. That's why. How this is great. This is yeah. brilliant. Oh, because she wanted to explain it. Yeah. yeah. But why didn't she do it with the with the second phrase? We didn't have we didn't get a single um because, we didn't get a single Because I, d I don't think that she's 
cottoned onto it in the same way. Yeah, I think you're this. right. I think she's like she thinks it's just like certain words that get reduced. Yes, like contractions. Yeah, and maybe things like gonna and wanna and stuff. And she doesn't realise it actually applies to the whole language. Yes. Yes. Yeah. How have you been? How have you been? How have you been since the last time I saw you? Is what the see that was a terrible model, wasn't it? How have you been since the last time I saw you? <laughs> That's what I'm going to say the next time that we start up our call to start up the podcast. I'm going to go, "Hey Neil, how's it going? How have you been since the last time I saw you?" The English class 101 told me that's how you say it. This means. How have you been? So I'm, that be, I'm being harsh because I'm pretty certain this girl is like a millionaire or close to being a millionaire. So well, no, she's made a, she's made a lot of money off her channel, so, so I can I can criticise. Well, we're, we're criticising, but for example, if if a student was watching this and they they model that and they then take that model and they reproduce that model when they are doing their IELTS or Cambridge first or something like that. What is going to be the reaction of the individual? I'd mark them down on, on, on pronunciation. Yeah? I'd say it was, I'd say it was in, in, inauthentic um, intonation and uh, obscured the, the meaning of what they were trying to say. Yeah, so that's, that's my point. Yeah, you could you could do you could do you could do that. Um, you could model what she's saying, and yeah, it's, it really well. Does it even? It doesn't really matter when you're just talking day to day. People are just going to think, oh, it speaks a bit weird. Still getting the points across. So you know, the communication is there. It's just you know a little bit lost. You know, we talked about in the previous English with Lucy video, and you should check that out. By the way, uh, we'll put some links below. Um, that. There's also connotations, there's meanings that come with this. So like with the synthetic language, it does convey uh, things that maybe you don't want to convey. So if you're being synthetic, you could, you could come across as condescending. Or if you're being synthetic, it just could come across that you're just a little bit, I don't know, weird, a little bit off center. Um, so, you know, that might not be your intention and you're trying to just, you know, speak like an English native speaker. Um, but the bigger thing is, and why Professor Rich is really, you know, taking the knives in, it's not anything to do with her as a teacher. She very, does very well presenting, same with English with Lucy, but it will affect you if you are going to be taking English standard exams. Uh, Welcome to Innovative Language Learning. Oh. So I ended, up, right. I ended up on their on their website. <laughs> That's fine, but you know mm. it, it does. It seems inconsequential, but that is it's, it's 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 a first step down the road to you know potential problems. When ultimately, I think one of the big I things think, yeah. with English language learners is they're learning for an aim. If your yeah. aim is communication. Yeah. You know, this may may be fine, but further down yeah. the line, it's going to bite you in the ass. Because no, I think know. even with I, I think even with communication, because you're going to hear you're going to come and speak to someone who's speaking normally, and they'll say, "Hey, buddy, how's it going?" And you'll be like, "What the hell did they just say? <laughs> what yeah. the hell did they just say?" Yeah, because you'll be expecting them to say, "How are you?" You know, and you know, it, it is funny because she she is capable of doing it naturally, as we've seen. Um, but I think you, you have to present um, you have to present the, con the consistent model as a language teacher. She's not doing that. She's not. She's 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 teaching as an instructor, right? Who's teaching like this is how things you know. This is a phrase. This is a phrase. Oh, and by the way, you can say it naturally like this, you know. So it's like she's outside of the communicative language teaching most of the time. She's just being like a kind of a lecturer. Kind yeah. of lecturing about the language, and then occasionally she'll jump into, you know, authentic mode and and give you a, an authentic model. Yeah. Um, that's a shame. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more if we've yeah. got time. Yeah. I kind of want to see where where she's where she's where she's kind of going with this. I might maybe we'll skip forward a little bit because this is quite a long video. Um, Call this. So when you don't know the vocabulary word for something, or you just the main reason why I love Grammarly is. 
Well, Grammarly is actually quite a good product, so I don't mind that being in there. <laughs> uh, it's, I think it's free as well. And it's, it's really great for students to improve their writing. Uh, anyway. The most natural way to ask what time a store or other establishment finishes is how late are you open? How late are you open? So if- Amazing. She gave like a pretty decent, a de pretty decent model. How late are you? How how late are you open? Right, and then suddenly she goes, "How late are you open?" Like immediately afterwards. If you ask this question, <laughs> let's just see that again. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Tell shops as well. The most natural way to ask what time a store or other establishment finishes is, "How late are you open?" See, how that's not too bad. I think she overstressed R. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, it was all right. And then suddenly... How late are you open? How late are you open? <laughs> suddenly she goes into synthetic mode immediately afterwards. Oh, dearie, dearie me, whatever your name is. Did she say her name at the start of the video? I feel like, we, I, feel like I should say her name rather than just saying this woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to call her 101. Okay, we'll call her 101. 101. So... If you ask this question, you will get the closing time as the answer. Like, how late are you open? Eight. How late are you open? 10. How late are you open? Midnight. Or how late are you open? We're open 24 hours. Yeah, see, so that wasn't too bad, but over-egging the intonation, definitely. Mm -hmm. Which might be an American thing, but I don't think so. I don't think that's how she would actually ask. I mm -hmm. think she'd ask with a little bit more, a little bit less strong intonation on that. But all right, so that's nitpicky. I think at the end of the day, she was giving a good stress model there, and I think to some extent that's more that's more important than if you're over-egging the intonation a little bit. And you I mean, know, what, what's what's that going to do for someone? They might just sound a bit friendlier than <laughs> than, than what they'd otherwise sound. It's fine. And you know, if if you uh, whoever's watching this, you know, what do you think? Um, if you're a, an English learner, did this help you? Do you understand what, you know, the points that we've criticised between authentic and synthetic uh, and authentic language um, and how that would be an issue for you? Is that something that you have focused on before? Does it matter to you? Why not? Please leave those comments because we'd love to get it. If you're a teacher, do you, do you see this a lot? Do you do this? Is this... What, do you, what are your opinions? We'd love to hear them as well. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's, it's frustrating. Uh, it is frustrating. This, is, this, this, this one is really frustrating me. Because the content's there. Say with English mm. Lose Lose Tea, the content's there. The presentation is there. There's a professional, there's a little bit more skew to maybe more formal business-like, as you pointed out, where with English with mm. Lucy, it's a little bit more informal, a bit friendly, oh, still a bit posh, but, you know, mm. it's that idea. So we've got all the elements there. The, the, it's just the element that is missing, which is the major component, is correct English. <laughs> Or, mm. and good models it, it's good pronunciation models and, yeah. the, and the reason why that's critically uh, a, a real issue here is that's the main aim of her video she's teaching people useful language chunks and she's not giving them a solid model a good model for each for every one of them look it's the whole video it goes on 20 25 that's it it's 25 25 phrases that every intermediate learner must know apparently uh, when he were open till is one of those phrases I'm not sure if I would particularly agree with that but I guess it could be useful but um, yeah I have to let's just have a, let's have a look at this one I have to plus verb hang on where was that yeah let's, uh... okay onward I have to I have to so my previous one was I need to go to a place if you want to just talk in general about responsibilities you can use I have to I have to get up early in the morning I have to study for my tests I have to think of a see this is what's so weird is again what we have here is a range of synthetic models with one good one thrown in just talk in general about responsibilities. You can use I have to. I so I think I can forgive someone when they first say I have to and they're not actually saying a phrase mm -hmm. because then they're kind of giving the grammar chunk. I actually don't do that and I actually try to make it weak 
uh, every time I demo it, which actually is a little bit synthetic because you wouldn't actually say I have to just on its own, would you? You'd thought you'd say something with it, but I do it because I don't want the students to get the wrong idea. Or if I do say two, I have two, I'll say that's obviously strong form and we're going to see the natural pronunciation now. And I think it's her second example that's good. I have to get up early in the morning. So that one's bad. And then this one's good. It's almost that it's the one where she switches off and she doesn't think too much about it. So I think it's uh, this, this next one to get up early in the morning. Now, I have to study for my tests. I have to study for my tests. Good example. Over eggs the intonation again. Sounds like a whiny teenager almost. I have to study for my tests. Maybe that's just American. But um, the, her, her, her demo of her hafts is good. And then she follows it up with a bad one. I have to think of a new hairstyle for my cat. Right, she sounds like she's making it up on the spot, which she probably is. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, that, maybe we're being too critical in that she's, in that we think she's intentionally being synthetic, but it could be the case, as you just pointed out, that she's just making up on the spot, and when we do that, we, she, she's delaying the, that I have to, to give her time to think, to no, say I think, I think that's, that, that's, that's only valid for this example, which is a very poor example. Um, but also, I think if you are thinking up examples on the spot, you, you've still you've still got to do the natural um, pronunciation. And if you do it synthetically, then you should follow it. I have to think of a new hairstyle for my cat. I have to think of a new hairstyle for my cat. Um, my cat's hairstyle is terrible. I have to think of a new hairstyle for my cat. Um, so, yeah, I uh, no, I don't like it. I'm not I'm not letting it get away with that. And there's so much prep that's obviously gone into these videos. I mean, look at the studio. She's got a studio. There's someone actually, she's got a cameraman. She spoke to him before. Um, I mean, that is fancy stuff. Yeah. If you're going to go to all that effort, for God's sake, you might as well already write the examples. And if you do think of them on the spot, which I do as well, because um, occasionally you're just given a video and then something comes into your head and you're like, oh, yeah, I'll use that as an example. Mm -hmm. Say it naturally, for yeah. God's sake. Well, I, I kind of... I'm done. I'm done with this. It's it, it feels very yeah. samey. Yeah, let's come out of it. One or one o oh gone. <laughs> Apart from the fact that she's making millions. <laughs> yeah, I, I think <laughs> probably I, sipping on her margarita. I think the issue, uh, not the, the issue about is, is that there's there's not enough awareness um, among learners and among teachers uh, I mean, are with this with it, and I think that's without, why it's so popular right because they just think yeah. oh these are just the words that I need to use yeah right but it's not well, just they, words they, they, I mean without <laughs> blowing too much smoke up my, my own ass that's basically what I try to do with Professor Rich it's supposed to be a channel which is like watch out <laughs> you know <laughs> it's, that's, that's kind of the point um, yeah totally agree sorry carry on um, no you know Go over to Professor Rich, have a look at some of Rich's videos and see the difference. You might, you might listen to the videos and you go, ah, oh, he's not as easy to understand as English with Lucy or 101, but that's the whole point. What you're it's listening something. to is not, it, it's not um, authentic, it's synthetic. So if you listen to this and think this is an idea of, this is what, English speakers sound like and then you go to an English speaking country you're going to be in for a big surprise because people generally don't talk like that or it, you'll come across people that do talk like that but they're generally people that are understanding and are trying to slow down or be synth or use synthetic language to be able to communicate with you but that's I mean, because there are, they, yeah, they there think are, you don't understand and that's yeah, the there problem are, there, you there are don't situations understand. when you use it yeah i mean i wouldn't call it synthetic language in those situations i call it you know frozen english or or something like that and you know yeah time and a place for it but the vast majority of the time that's not going to happen and especially if someone hasn't got the time that's when it really ain't going to happen. And most of the time, people don't have time, do they? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you know, it, it, it might be something that makes you feel good short term in that, oh, yeah, I understand this. Or, mm. you know, this, is, yeah. this was really simple. But long term, it's, it's, it's not going to help. In fact, it's going to 
put your idea of your English much higher than it is with in terms of your what you think you know with comprehension with uh, your ability to communicate and you know it does sound we, we might sound very critical but that is because we 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 have seen this time and time and again and we know how important it is down the road uh, initially it might not seem like a big deal but it cascades it snowballs exponential growth uh, mm. of issues with that do you have any final thoughts um no 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 i think i think everything that needs to be said has been said uh, we could potentially return to this channel i mean they've got a whole bloody load of videos and um and i i don't know if any i don't know if they really do anything else other than the, just this though just like phrases um but i'd like to i'd really like to see if there was a con i'd, I'd like to see her explain a concept and i'd like to see that from lucy as well and they might have that you know like if they just go into a concept like I might do a video on like sentence stress or I might do a video on um, using phonemics or, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. I'd quite, yeah, I think they, I think they both do actually. I think they do, they do, they do like learning method videos, like, you know, how to learn using books and stuff like that. It might be quite interesting to see some of that, to see if the advice they're giving there is actually good advice mm -hmm. and based on teaching experience or whether it's just stuff that they're making up yeah. as, oh, that sounds like it might be a good idea without actually having the experience. I to think that is, is a very interesting topic for us to cover, but we're going to leave that to you. Leave a comment below. Do you want to hear that? Uh, do you want to listen uh, to us kind of deep dive further into English with Lucy 101? And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, but it, it's all up to you. We are very much for what helps you. So, you know, let us know uh, in the comments below. I like that. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, let us know in the comments below I've been Neil of Team Teacher Fame if you're wanting more stuff from myself go to teamteacherchina.com we also have Team Teacher China YouTube where we have uh, videos of the content uh, that, uh, the teaching content and materials that we produce on teamteacherchina.com at Team Teacher English where we take that materials those content and we put them into self-study videos mostly for kids mm -hmm. and team teacher baby where i take my experience as a teacher and put that into parenting mm. and rich yeah check out youtube.com slash professor rich uh, english learning videos uh, two videos a week and live stream once a week absolutely fantastic we... if you want to come on the show elt under the covers at gmail.com give us an email yeah, uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and keep watching and keep looking at our videos because we'll be delving more into these uh, teacher tubers, tuber teachers, what have you, and uh, we can give you maybe some more opinions about these different ones. So if you've got any recommends for us to watch, let us know. It's a good one. All right. Bye bye. Catch you later.